Today's topic is on cancer prevention, which should concerns everybody since everybody is at risk for cancer. But before we talk about cancer, let's go through some of the effects that we know about terahertz. Terahertz is a radiation, uh, electromagnetic radiation that lies between uh, infrared and microwave radiation. So for those of you interested in mass, these are the frequency of terahertz frequency, which is actually far infrared uh, radiation. So it's 10 to the power of 12 trillion, and uh, that's the frequency of terahertz. Again, like I say, it's same as far infrared. It is in fact far infrared. So what is it used for? It's mainly used in communi telecommunication, where they're better than microwave. If you're using a 5G phone, the wavelength that you all use is in the microwave range. They are also able to detect substances. Almost every molecule has a signature in the terahertz frequency range. So this is a, what is known as the electromagnetic spectrum, all the way from radio wave, which is very long frequency, to very short frequency, like the gamma X and X-rays. So those on the right, ultraviolet X-rays and gamma rays, are capable of harming your body. They cause mutation in your cells if you are exposed to them for too long. This side is mostly safe. So radio waves is why we are able to listen to the radio and the television. Then as the uh, electronics improve and advances, we have gone to now the 5G uh, telecommunication devices which make use of microwave. Progressing further, next stage will be 6G and beyond. We are using terahertz waves. So terahertz waves we only managed to study it properly when we began to develop techniques to generate, monitor, and detect terahertz waves. So in 2011, the breakthrough came when we, when scientists were able to shine terahertz waves on a painting, and they were able to detect an earlier layer that they can in fact uh, uncover the artist's name written on the canvas uh, many, many layers or many years ago, prior to the the, the, the the latest painting which was painted on it. So before this, we have difficulty studying terahertz waves because of what is known as a terahertz gap. I will show you what a terahertz gap is. So this is terahertz waves, far infrared. Infrared is on this side, microwave is on the other. So we used to study rays on this end using electronics methods. We use a study infrared, visible light, and all the other rays using photonics for the study of light. So, terahertz is in between. Nobody knows how to study them. Of course, today, most of the research on terahertz is done using photonic techniques. If you heard of photonic chip, that is a chip that China is trying to develop using this kind of techniques. So where is the application? As I said just now, mainly in telecommunications, it's being used in 6G. And some months back, there was a paper that looked at 6G and said that it was safe for human beings. So 6G is far infrared or terrorist. It is safe for everybody. It's used for military and security applications because it can shine through and you can visualize what's underneath. It's also used in agriculture, uh, in drug monitoring, pesticide control and all that because uh, uh, it can detect liquid. And in the case of drought, they can measure the liquid that are in the plants and assess whether a drought is coming or not. It is also used in health and science because it's non-ionizing, it doesn't damage the cells and, it, and cells resonate at such frequency. So because of this, terror is known as the light of life. So why is it we can use terrorists and then our whatever we suffer recover? There are 
reasons why Terahertz is able to heal whatever you're suffering from and number one that's because of heat if you uh, have been exposed to sun ray which sun can heal some things in you of course not the hot hot sun of the equator which is Singapore but in temperate climate sun is, can be healing and a sauna infrared sauna also can be very healing it's because of the heat the heat can penetrate but far infrared which is terahertz penetrate better than infrared you know? so when they can penetrate they can push out toxins they can stimulate water molecules and all that but beyond the heat terahertz also is able to heal your tissues because of the frequency how scientists do that is because they eliminate the heat element and they found that terahertz is still able to have a therapeutic effect because of the frequency so terahertz application in health sciences is in two areas one is diagnostic that means you can use it by x-ray or ultrasound and you can actually detect you can actually map out how big the tumor is uh, under your skin and uh, you can make out very high resolution the different uh, areas the different layers that the tumor may have so it's a very accurate diagnostic tool it is used for therapy as well and that's what we are focusing on terahertz properties are very important in this regard terahertz we say this now is non-ionizing and terahertz energy is absorbed by polar compounds polar compounds are conductors of electricity water for example will absorb terahertz waves so that's why the penetration uh, of terahertz wave depends on uh, what is underneath the more water there is the more you will be absorbed the energy corresponds to what is known as hydrogen bonds of van der Waal forces in chemistry this kind of forces bind things together if you know a little bit of chemistry you know that proteins fats carbohydrates are made up of very long molecules which are folded so that the molecules have a solid structure uh, a shape and in the body a, a, a molecule such as protein or, or carbohydrate or whatever uh, is able to have activities like uh, uh, stimulating a, a nerve impulse or activating a reaction is because of this three-dimensional shape okay so other than that it can penetrate all non-conducting material any material that doesn't conduct electricity doesn't conduct heat uh, terror is able to penetrate doesn't matter whether it's wood brick stone or whatever plastic ceramics uh, terror is able to uh, penetrate and it's absorbed differently by different kinds of tissue different biological tissue because of the water content absorb it at different rates terahertz can change the shape of molecules okay and that's very important because uh, of the effect on the shape of the compounds normal human cells resonate at terahertz frequency and this means that it can activate uh, a lot of the systems in the cell and by doing that you can regulate biological systems by changing the interaction of neurotransmitters and receptors so what is the effect of terrorists on the body well it open up blood vessels it vibrate water molecule it increases the activity of uh, the factory in the cell called the mitochondria which increases energy production hyperactive cells that are highly inflammatory get normalized and it can unzip DNA cells uh, DNA molecules in the, uh, in, in the nucleus and by unzipping and activating the DNA is able to perform its various functions so open up blood vessels in the tissue the arterial from the heart go through and because it's under pressure from the heart water oxygen uh, nutrients and so forth all leave 
the artery into the surrounding tissues, which is a low pressure environment, and all the reactions all take place. At the venous end, carbon dioxide, uh, waste products, and all that all go back all into the veins. But because it's still under pressure, not all go back. Huh? You need drainage pipes called lymphatic vessels, which drain the excess water to go back to the heart. So this is, it open up the blood vessel. So any swelling will improve once you up blow that area with carotid waves. Next is regular inflammatory response. In the blood, there are white blood cells. These are white blood cells, different types. And these white blood cells have uh, different lobes in the nucleus. They are responsible for the inflammatory response, which allows you to protect yourself against invasion by microorganisms and things like that, as well as to protect yourself from anything that invades the body. But sometimes it's too much, it's excessive. Huh? So if you have heard of autoimmune diseases, when the inflammatory response is uh, excessive, it can regulate, it can calm down, and you can uh, reduce the inflammation. So on the skin, if you have rashes or, or any uh, autoimmune diseases or even arthritis and all that, it can calm it down. That's, that's the effect of therapies. And in the mitochondria, this is the factory inside the cell. These are the various functions listed. Uh, that this mitochondria perform. So one of the chief things is it give us energy. Huh? When you energize, your mitochondria produce a lot of ATP, which then convert it back into uh, ADP, and in a conversion, energy is released. That's how we can do all kinds of things. Beyond that, you can synthesize a lot of things, amino acids, lipids, and so forth, uh, gene, the gene give the instruction, give the menu of to how to make a protein or whatever. So it's able to read the, ge the gene and manufacture the protein. There's also uh, uh, getting rid of molecules that are no longer needed. Uh, phago 4, mitophagy, all these things are for that. Uh, and the signaling, uh, passage of signals in a nerve or in a muscle cell. Uh. So nutrients are important yeah, and so forth. So a lot of action take place in, in the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. ah, then when a, protein, uh, a cell uh, is no longer, after 120 days or so, when it's no longer needed, it finishes its end of its life cycle, lifespan, uh, the, the cell is broken down. Uh, it's fragmented and different fragments of the cell will have proteins that carries a signal 5 me and 8 me. And then certain white blood cells that can engulf these protein fragments called phagosomes, lysosomes and, and, and macrophages, they will engulf all the waste products of the cell and remove them. Okay. Uh, it can sterilize bacteria. Now this is very useful. In, in COVID-19, we were using terahertz, uh, and there were trials that showed that terahertz, in fact, does kill the COVID viruses. In fact, it kills a lot of viruses, as well as bacteria, as well as some parasites. Uh, this is the ability of terahertz waves. And that's why infection get better when you blow it with terahertz. It activates DNA. DNA, as you know, is in a, a double strand, okay? It's open up. It open up for two reasons. One, uh, the, the, the menu for production of various uh, nutrients that you need will be there and so you have a, a primer, a printer, you know, that read and, and actually print out the, the molecule. You also need to open up when you need to duplicate your DNA, your chromosomes. And that's what happens when it does that. Okay? So let's talk about cancer prevention, which is the topic for today. Cancer. It's a disease where cells multiply out of control due to DNA changes, the, the change in the DNA that things it. You see, in, in our human body, uh, the DNA has a very interesting thing. There will be a menu for the production of, let's say, a protein. Uh, for simplicity, let's say, your blood protein, your hemoglobin, there will be a menu which 
amino acid to use and all that. Uh, there will be a gene that tell you to start. So once the gene is activated, you tell the DNA to start producing and you will start to read what to put in and to make the gene. And there will be a, D, a, the, a gene to turn it off. Uh, so for the gene to start and for the gene to turn off, this gene will have a gene to make it start and make it stop. The gene to turn it off also have a gene to start and to turn it. So there are multiple genes regulating. In cancer, this kind of control mechanism is absent. So genes that control cell growth, what is known as oncogenes, make the, the, the cancer cells multiply and you can't turn it off. The tumor suppression gene is switched off or not activated. So instead of this, you get this, a mass, chaotic mass of cells. That's what cancer looks like. Is it possible to prevent cancer? No cancer is 100% preventable. 30 to 50% of cancer cases is preventable. Uh, because causes of cancer are complex. Genetic change increases cancer risk and it can be inherited. You know? So uh, when they are inherited, of course, is very difficult to prevent it from happening and as you know people who have family history of breast cancer or among the Cantonese nose cancer uh, the esopharyngeal cancer uh, some cancers are familiar these are the cancers that are familiar you see and it often interplay with environmental triggers things in the environment can trigger off but you must know that 95% of cancer cases are due to lifestyle and environment. And so this is something that we've got to be concerned about because we can do something about it. Are there cancers that cannot be prevented? There's one cancer that cannot be prevented. This testicular cancer. But it's very rare. The some risk factors cannot be prevented. Family history cannot be prevented. Age cannot be prevented. Yeah, you can't change your age. You get older. The older you are, the more likely you will be. And uh, any mutation that's inherited. Yeah. Predisposing health conditions, for example, if you a uh, family issue of diabetes, ulcerative colitis, these are conditions that predispose you to cancer. You can't do anything about it. And infection with these viruses can cause cancer. Yeah different kind of cancer. Hepatitis B and Hepatitis C, you know. EB virus is uh, associated with a few cancers like your nose cancer, HIV, HPV, all linked up with certain cancers. H. pylori, a helicobacter pylori, associated with stomach cancer. As we say just now, some cancers are familiar. There's environmental causes, 95% are due to lifestyle, which is what most of the talk is about. So cells become cancerous when they divide uncontrollably, when they trigger off, they stop, or they stop making proteins, uh, uh, which tell the, 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 the cells to stop dividing, or the, it don't function at all. So initially there is the abnormal growth, uh, abnormal cell proliferation. As it grows further, more and more new mutation take place and they become more and more abnormal. Because of this new mutation, every cancer is different. So now our medical science has improved so much that now what we do is we want to find out the DNA of every cancer that uh, is there. So that you find that in everybody is different. Cancer risk factors are these. Diet, obesity, smoking, alcohol, and lifestyle. Only five risk factors. Very simple, but very complicated. <laughs> Causes of cancer, sunlight, tobacco, diet, radiation, alcohol, virus, infections, uh, smoking, sedentary, alcohol, obesity. Infection is very important. Uh. Virus cause up to 
7% of cancer. And one of the most important causes of, of infection, one of the most important group of infection is unprotected sex because it's totally preventable. So how do we detect cancer? Traditionally, we do a blood urine test, we use x-ray CD scans and try and look inside and see where the cancer is. We do a biopsy, we take a sample of the tissue right from the liver or from the kidney to biopsy. Uh, we do x-rays, we put a dye, swallow the dye, go into the stomach, uh, we can see the stomach clearly or the colon clearly. Yeah. We do physical examination. This is the traditional way of doing it. But look how we advance. Now we can use AI to fight cancer. AI, especially for doctors in rural areas, you can, in fact, use the AI to figure out exactly what kind of cancer it is. And now we are even more advanced. We, we can, in fact, take a look at the proteins that are in the blood. And with the help of this protein, we can identify at least 18 different kind of uh, cancers. We use exosomes. Pancreas is right in the center of your abdomen. Uh, it's totally inaccessible. And that's why people with pancreatic cancer, by the time you discover them, it's very late already. And often they die within six months. But using these techniques, because all cells secrete substance called exosome. And these exosomes are released out. Cancer, pancreas secrete a lot of gastric juices, a lot of digestive juices into the stomach. Mm -hmm. So you take these juices that they secrete, you can in fact figure out whether there is a cancer there or not. That's how advanced we are. We can do liquid biopsies. That means we take whatever things that are released by the cell, DNA, RNA, anything, and we can straight away determine whether it is a cancer or not. We can now identify even genetic biomarkers. Genetic science has advanced to such a stage that we can now actually identify which cancer cell this is. Better still, we have, can now force cells, cancer cells, to produce the biomarkers. So straight away we know that, that that's how advanced they are. And then we can also use fluorescent techniques, that means put a dye tag, the dye with uh, uh, something that will attach itself to the cell. And when it attaches itself to the cell, uh, you can use microscopy or spectroscope to look at it and you can see it fluoresce. Amazing. That's how advanced we are now. So we are no longer uh, at kind of can't do anything until you discover, and by the time you discover too late, we can actually do a lot of things. And this liquid biopsies and this protein in the blood is amazing because you can just take something that is there and you can straight away figure out what it is. So there you are. Virtual assistant, internet, AI. These are all the kind of things that AI in liver cancer. Huh? Exosomes are like this. The chemicals inside the cell will often be released in a sac, uh, go into a sac, and then when the thing is complete, it will seal off and the sac is expelled. So a lot of these micros, vesicles, which contains a lot of chemicals, we can identify. Uh, biomarkers, uh, useful that diagnosis and prognosis. If you have this biomarker, for instance, and once we know that this biomarker is a good sign, so good prognosis, low risk. See? So that's the amazing thing. We can take the liquid from inside your brain. Your brain has a liquid called the cerebral spinal fluid. Uh, you can take a saliva. You can take the fluid in your lungs or your urine. And we can look for all the kind of changes. So it is very, very advanced nowadays. Huh? So questions answered by all this, is it likely to be cancer? What type of cancer? What is the drug to use? What's the optimal doses for the cancer return? Very important question nowadays. <laughs> Treatment technique of cancer, traditionally surgery, chemo, radiation. Then we add hormone. Then we learn to make use. In, if you remember, Donald Trump has 
HIV, right? And the blood of a Singaporean who has HIV and therefore has antibodies, the antibodies against it, they take his blood, generate the antibody, and they give it to Trump, and he was killed. It's true. It's reported. <laughs> yeah. So this is using the body's immune system. Stem cell transplant. Uh, bone marrow transplant, which is actually stem cells, have been around for quite many, many years, 10 over years, or maybe 20 even. Yeah. And now besides giving radioactive waves in radiation, now we use proton, beams of proton, which is very high energy. And now the uh, radiation therapy is even more sophisticated. You can, if you can map out the tumor, it's this shape, this large, uh, and you can now put the radiation from different angles to, to conform to the shape of the tumor. Amazing, the way these things are advanced. Uh, so before I talk about the newer techniques of treatment, I want to talk about some of the complications of traditional methods of treatment which some people still go for. Surgery, there's always pain. Surgery, you need to remove the lymph nodes. Let's say you have breast cancer, you will remove the lymph nodes on your neck and in your armpit so that it doesn't spread. Uh, and if you are, have to do with your abdomen, if there's a cancer, you may have to construct a stoma, a tube, so that the feces will pass out there. And so you need to keep it clean, you need to drain it, uh, at regular intervals and so forth. There's lots of appetite, difficulty with food, eating, cramps, all that. And there's an impact on the younger ones who are still young, on sexual health and fertility. And often it's followed by chemo or radiation treatment. Okay? Then, people begin to think about focus surgery using cryo, laser, using electric or using robots. And that's what gradually becomes. This is traditional surgery. Advanced surgery. Three holes only. Laparoscopic surgery. That means you put in a tube and you do it a micro poke. Don't you need to remove all the tissues? No need. Because techniques are so advanced. So, because techniques are so advanced, there's no point removing everything. You can't remove all even. Because there may be one or two cancer cells just outside what you remove. So what's the point of removing everything if you can miss one or two cancer cells? So, chemotherapy. Chemotherapy until recently has a lot of side effects. Loss of hair, bleeding, bruising, anemia, nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, uh, you can't focus, and just everything seems to go haywire because the chemicals don't only attack the cancer, it also attack the normal cells. And that's why you have all these side effects. So, chemotherapy is getting better and better and better. I will tell you more. Radiation? Depends on area of treatment, radiation also kills your normal cells. Take months to recover. Uh, all kinds of problems. And uh, depending on whether it's smoke or not, the effects of radiation may vary. So that's what radiation treatment is like. Uh, breast radiation treatment. Terahertz. For a lot of cancer patients experiencing a lot of side effects from treatment, carrot is able to ameliorate the effects, the side effects of cancer treatment. So, of course, if you follow what some people say about energy channels, carrot is able to unblock them, but more important, it increases blood flow activating and regulating the inflammation and uh, improve the drainage that's why things get better so modern advances modern advances are fantastic there's some of them immune checkpoint inhibitor it's like a, uh, in the uh, 
okay, okay. the cancer cell okay. often need to use many things and as a cancer use a particular as a cancer cell use a particular molecule there is what is known as a checkpoint and we can in fact block this checkpoint that's what it's called immune checkpoint huh? then car t cell therapy t cell is your own white blood cell that can attack the cancer cell but t cell need to be activated and how we activate it we combine it we take the blood take out the t cell from the person and then we combine it with a cancer antigen so when you combine it and then you infuse back into the body this thing will look for the cancer cells and once it hit the cancer cell the t cell can work immediately very potent targeted drug delivery nowadays this kind of drug is get, the molecule is getting smaller and smaller so it could be targeted at genes of proteins so a very small molecule can target it and block it so enzymes like kinase, protease can be targeted and blocked and then there's nano vaccine nano vaccine means that in very low doses of hypothermic we include heat in it CRISPR is a magnificent thing CRISPR is a gene editing technique that means uh, from bacteria you get a section which can read the DNA and CRISPR can then identify the part of the gene which is foreign, which is cancerous and it can eliminate out, it can edit it out, remove it uh, this has been on for quite a while already uh, and machine learning can reduce the time to find the, and analyze cancer so drug use to reduce breast cancer risk uh, this is the, is licensed about I think some, some years back if you're at risk of breast cancer there is an uh, anti-breast cancer drug which can be taken as a tablet and you take it you reduce the risk by 50% then there's a 7 minute cancer treatment <laughs> just go in uh, use the immune therapy drug 7 minutes and you're done so these are some of the advances that are made yeah? so I show this uh, uh, immune checkpoint no this 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 is uh, this is immune checkpoint so uh, antigen presenting cell we must combine with the receptor uh, this is a tumor cell uh, and this is an inactive cell when it combine it becomes activated with the anti uh, cancer antibody and this will search out the tumor cell and the T cell activated it will kill it so it's a very novel technique no this is an immune checkpoint sorry this is an immune checkpoint the checkpoint is uh, this antigen so you will block the tumor cell car T the blood from the patient to get T cells the cancer antigen is then combined with the T cell and the T cell goes in okay these are the foods that will increase cancer risk red meats and processed food alcohol high calorie sugary drinks nutrient sparse food concentrated sugars refined flour all preserved salted pickle processed meat foods contaminated by moldiness which contains aflatoxin all this increase the cancer risk the only thing that reduce your cancer risk uh, fresh food high fiber diet dairy fat seeds fresh fruit vegetable fresh meat from chicken ring pork fish and pulses so 
uh, pizzas, ham, bacon, all this increase your cancer risk. Who's that cause oxidative stress? This food cause stress on your body symptoms. And uh, you need antioxidants so to, to kind of act, uh, go against this oxidative stress that this food produces. High fat, high carbohydrate diets, refined carbohydrate, refined carbohydrates are uh, white rice and uh, uh, flour, which is uh, uh, porridge, uh, alcohol, cooking oils, especially pufa. Pufa are the vegetable oils. Your corn oil, your sunflower oil, uh, all the vegetable oils. The, uh, Malaysia was producing uh, palm oil, right? As well as peanut oil and all that. So, they yes, with politics. They were against them. So, USA was promoting pufa, corn oil, sunflower oil, all the vegetable oils. See, these are all very unstable. They cause cancer. They get hydrogenated. Nothing to do with GFO. It's to do with the fact that the the, the sunflower, corn oil, soybean oil, all this, they are very <laughs> unstable. They get easily converted to the saturated form, which is highly toxic. So you are told to take polyunsaturated fatty acids. Don't believe that nonsense. Uh, use olive, avocado oil, spinach oil, sesame oil. Olive and avocado oil are expensive. When you like cheaper ones, spinach oil. And to some extent, uh, palm oil. But we don't use palm oil very much for cooking. Uh. So peanut oil is great. Grape seed oil. Grape seed oil. Grape seed oil. So palm oil is good. Huh? They say palm oil is high by 70p. Palm oil. I don't know about that. Go check it out. The other thing is, lard is good. <laughs> People don't believe it, right? You have been told these are fatty acids. Coconut oil is also good. Why is good? Because these two oils are very stable. They are high smoking quality. So if you want to deep fry, you're better off deep frying with this. Then we puff up. See? That is the reason. And because this also causes oxidative stress, uh, and stress leads to free radicals which damage the liver. That's the reason why. So I've taken to uh, taken to, to eating butter nowadays. I switch oil to peanut oil and occasionally use olive oil. So it's a matter of how much you can do to help yourself. A lot of the recommendations in the 60s, we found out was determined more by the politics in the US than anything else. And there's some evidence to suggest that people in the US influence health recommendations and now are found to be not true. So, biological effects of diet cause your gut dysbiosis. As you know, your gut contains bacteria. And there are good and bad bacteria. And there are a lot of things, including some brain disorders. Uh, autism is one of them, due to abnormal gut bacteria. You can cause events that produce all kinds of abnormal genes, cause inflammation, cause hormonal and metabolic distances, and so forth. This gut thing couldn't be more important because your, your gut genome, the bacterial genome inside your colon protects you from a lot of things and you get that by eating fresh vegetables, fresh fibers, variety of fruits. In Sweden many years back there was reported in a newspaper that somebody got a fecal transplant. That means his gut don't have the good bacteria, so they put in, they get donated feces from somebody with a healthy bacteria and they put it in, so to regrow the bacteria and that was a success. So you must know what is natural sugar, what is added sugar in bread, 
all kinds of drinks and sweets which are pure sugar. <laughs> Eat healthy. Legumes, whole meats. Alcohol in moderation. Avoid or limit. Processed and packaged food like fast food, sugary drinks. So another another thing is a trans fat. Trans fat is anything that is fried. Uh, any deep fried things, unless you are using lard or coconut oil, which is very stable, they become trans fat, which is cancerous. Uh, so these are top ten cancerous food. Highly salted salt. A high salt diet can cause cancer. Remember this. Grilled meat, artificial sweeteners, trans fats, low fiber, alcohol, and so forth. Very simple. Take fresh food. Uh, make sure it's not salty. Make sure it's not too sweet. I'm told that nowadays a lot of Chinese cooks put sugar in, in their cooking. So that is an added consideration. That's why you can do your own cooking. What does a healthy diet looks like? A variety of food, fruits, vegetables, whole grain, lean protein, healthy fats, low sodium, low sugar, choose lower saturated fats, don't choose trans fats, don't choose anything to do with cholesterol, healthy proteins, chicken, lean pork, fish and pork. Lean pork has to be emphasized. Because if it's fatty pork, then of course it's not healthy. But honestly, depending on your risk factors, even if you take a little fatty pork, that's also okay. Because if you heard of keto diet, they focus much on the fat. Carbohydrates should be 45 to 60 percent of your daily calories, two servings of fruit, two servings of vegetables. And of course, they must be tailored to your health risk, which is your family history and your personal history. Your family history tells you what you're at risk for. If your parents die or this or have something to do with this, that is a risk factor. And if you have illnesses or you have things in the past that predispose it to, to cancer, you, are, you must take note of it. So, food guide fat use sparingly. Milk or cheese. Some Chinese can't take milk, so replace that with soya. Might as well. Meat, poultry, dry beans, and nuts. Nuts are very healthy. Eh? And uh, almost all nuts, of course, some people are allergic to nowadays peanuts. But peanuts is very good. I stack a lot on peanuts. <laughs> I love peanuts. Vegetable, trees, fruits. Fruits, by the way, contains a lot of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. The, but, so therefore, fruit juice is not healthy. But if you take the whole fruit, if you take, uh, for example, watermelon, uh, most of it is water. But if you take the fruit, you, at least you have some fibers that go along with it. But if you take the juice, it's just pure juice, it's sugar. And this, this should be about half of the intake should be this. So this one is recommended, whole grain, healthy protein, fruits, vegetables, water, healthy oils. Uh, this was done by Harvard. The, the plate, you can get it on the internet. Uh, obesity. Fat tissue produces hormone. That's what many people don't know. Especially for guys, because estrogen is a female hormone. Obesity lead to high levels of insulin and insulin growth hormones and sex hormones. Estrogen leads to breast endometrium to all these cancers in the female. Now, when you are obese, your blood sugar level will be high. And when your blood sugar is high, your insulin is also high. Because your body, your pancreas is trying to bring the blood sugar level down. So you produce more insulin. And after some time, there is what is known as insulin insensitivity. In other words, the insulin is no longer sensitive to the blood sugar. And that is called diabetes. 
diabetes has nothing to do with blood sugar. You can you you can't say I have high blood sugar. I don't have diabetes. No, you are already diabetic once you have high blood sugar. That's because when you high blood sugar, you would have high insulin, and that in itself is diabetes. So obesity leads to inflammation. It promotes cell mutation and tumor growth. In fact, obesity is a cause for almost all cancers. You see, you raise the risk of all cancers. Obesity causes increase in growth hormone and increased risk of cancer cells growing. The risk is proportional to the amount of excess weight. And how long you have that weight? So the higher you are, the higher your risk. That's what it means. And especially with these tumors, colorectal, postmenopausal breast cancer, uterine, esophagus, kidney, and pancreas. And as I said, pancreas. You can't. Very hard to find pancreas cancer because it's so hidden and it's not known. People who get pancreatic cancer usually end up dying. Yeah, I got pregnant. Yeah. So there you are. All this cancer. Brain, meningioma, thyroid, esophagus, stomach. Multiple myeloma is a white blood cell cancer. All usually affecting the bones. See? Because of the bone marrow there. So there's an interaction between your fat tissue and your tumor because of the hormones. Fat tissue, adipose tissue, especially in your stomach, are very active producing all kinds of chemicals which are harmful chemicals. See? So type 2 diabetes is overweight or obese. There's there's a difference between being overweight and obese. I will explain later. So, higher risk of developing cancer because of this disease. These are some of this. TNF, tumor necrosing factor, IFM, interleukin, all the various things. These are all pro-inflammatory adipokines. These are all cute things on the fat tissues that can uh, very harmful and toxic and produce cancer. Same here. Inflammation, abnormal fat in the blood, insulin resistance and high blood pressure. That's the risk. So how does it cost? Once you are obese or you're overweight, fat cells increase inflammation, makes extra hormones and growth factors, all this. Hormones cause cells in the body to divide more often increase the chance of being cancer and that's what happened. No fun. So you may enjoy your food. That's why the Romans are clever. After they eat, they have vomitorium where they vomit out the food. So they, <laughs> it doesn't put on weight. And I think in Vietnam, uh, in some parts of Vietnam, they have this habit where after they eat and engorge themselves, they vomit out the food. I suppose that's one way of doing it, but I think you can enjoy your food is the quality rather than the quantity. Yeah. <laughs> Why people get obese? Individuals consume more, they consume high amounts, especially fats and sugars, and then snacking. I like this one. Eating on visual cues. A seafood diet. What you see, you eat. A seafood diet. So snacking, comfort foods. Inactivity leads to excessive energy which is stored as fat. And when you don't sleep adequately, you put on more weight. Then of course, to be fair, there are some medication prescribed by doctors that is the weight gain. If so, ask the doctor to change. If possible, change it. You know? Food addiction. All kinds of eating disorders are out there, which can cause us to put on weight. Smoking. Smoking is really toxic. 7,000 chemicals in cigarette smoke. 70 have been identified as known to cause cancers in humans and animals. 
smokers have 15 to 30 percent increased risk or either having cancer of the lung or dying from it. Once you smoke one to five cigarettes a day, your risk go up to seven percent. More than 35 cigarettes a day, 26 percent. And whatever you do, exercise like that cannot reverse this risk, remember. Because it damages your DNA and that's it. Passive smokers, if somebody smoke and you smoke the second hand smoke, you also face a nerve risk. Vaping uses why vaping is electronic. But vaping make you sensitive to the effect of nicotine and all that. So they found that vaping users usually switch to cigarettes, a cheaper version. And that's a risk. How smoking causes cancer? It binds to DNA at a particular location. So, and the carcinogens in smoking, these are identified carcinogens. Huh? Uh, polycyclic hydrocarbons, nitrosamine, aldehyde, biotin, volatile, organic hydrocarbons, and metals. So, all these chemicals are there. Huh? And this activates cancer growth once it is in your body and interact with the, your body processes. Cancers caused by smoking is lung cancer. But besides this, there are a lot of other cancers. Mouth, throat, larynx, esophagus, trachea, bronchus, stomach, colon, rectum, liver, whole lung list. So in other words, smoking is not just about lung cancer. It's a whole lot of other cancers. Of course, you may not think it's due to nicotine, but people have found a connection. Huh? Even myeloid leukemia can be caused by smoking. Right? What, what is myeloid? Huh? Myeloid leukemia is a leukemia, a white blood cell. The, 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 the Chinese say it's a white blood cell, eat up your red blood cells. <laughs> it didn't actually eat up, it eat up every other, other cell. Huh? It's a cancer cell. Okay, then. There are some people, about 10-15% 10, of people who smoke who don't get cancer, right? So, are they protected? Perhaps. Huh? That's why they don't have it. They don't have the gene, perhaps. They don't have the internal thing. Yeah. But smoking accounts for 25% of all cancer deaths. That's a lot. So, there you are. These are all the cancers caused by smoking. So, smoking releases about 5,000 chemicals, it damages our DNA, and it enters our body through our lungs because of smoke, and the damage causes cancer. It is, uh, there's nothing good about smoking, to be very honest. Alcohol, I give a talk on alcoholic. Uh, complications. Just a, a brief roundup. Alcohol responsible for four percent of all cancers diagnosed. Drinking, especially stomach, pancreatic, and prostate cancer. The the link between prostate pancreatic cancer is not firm, but because it causes pancreatitis, and pancreatitis can lead to cancer, there is a inferred link. One bottle of wine a week increases lifetime risk. If you are a non-smoker, by 1% and 1.4%. So if you add smoking, it's even worse. Five. One bottle of wine equivalent of five. And ten cigarettes per week. So one bottle of wine is equivalent to five cigarettes a week. One bottle of wine is equivalent to five cigarettes per week for women. This is how we make it equivalent. So if a person smoke and drink, you can actually work it out. So both tobacco and alcohol are class one carcinogen. Why alcohol is so bad? You know that some Chinese cannot take alcohol, right? If they take alcohol, they vomit. Uh, this is actually a good thing. A very, very good thing. 
I explain to you why. In the body, if you drink, Alcohol is converted to the aldehyde. So if it's converted to aldehyde, alcohol doesn't affect you so much and therefore you can drink some more. So those who cannot alcohol accumulate cause you to vomit and so you stop drinking. It saves you. But if you uh, if you if your body can metabolize alcohol, you go to the stage of acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is toxic, highly toxic. It is in fact a carcinogen. So there you are. Which is worse? Alcohol versus cigarettes? Alcohol also causes cancer. Alcohol is much worse. It ruins life, it reduces the individual sense of self. Because alcohol, among other things, is a depressant. It causes you to be depressed. It causes you to have all the uh, low poor esteem and loss of memory and all that. A lot of problems. All alcohol is essentially harmful. There's no such thing as a good alcohol. People tell you about red wine is supposed to be very good. And so why is red wine so good? Because of something called resveratrol, which people who drink a lot of wine in France have a low heart disease. And resveratrol is now an accepted antioxidant, which is anti-aging. But the antioxidant oxi resveratrol in a capsule to have the same amount of oxygen from drinking wine as the capsule to drink gallons of wine for that purpose. No. Alcohol, you cannot drink wine to get the resveratrol because you won't get enough of it. 90% who drink more than 4 units daily. 4 units are like 2, two big bottles or more than 2 glasses of wine. Expectancy is reduced. Although, having said that, compared to alcohol, smoking has no benefit at all. Whereas alcohol, if you limit yourself to four units a day, you can at least say that it's not harmful. You can handle it. Know your wine. These are all equivalent. Yeah. Women, half of what men can handle. Yeah. So this, that is them, 285, two of this, two of this, two of this, two of this, a day. But if you don't drink regularly and once in a while you drink, you, you binge because you have a celebration, a wedding party or whatever, fine, that's okay. You get fatty liver. But your liver can recover after one or two weeks. But if you regularly binge, you're in for trouble. These are all the signs of addiction, nausea, sweating, shakiness, impaired cognitive abilities, irregular heartbeats, liver disease. Weakened immunity, blood sugar spikes, stomach inflammation. And of course, more important than anything else, alcohol is responsible for your liver damage. It goes through fatty liver, uh, hepatitis, uh, fibrosis, and then cirrhosis. And cirrhosis can give rise to liver cancer. Uh, any stage, liver cancer can develop. Uh, so, this is one of the bad things about drinking. If you can't control yourself. Alcohol 
and cancer. Cancer is common in alcoholics and all this. Your risk goes up the more you drink. Cessation of drink decreases cancer risk, especially for the mouth and the esophagus. And of course, if the relationship is your people who study alcoholism and identify spouses as suffering, Susan, controlling, cancer, wavering, Winifred, these are all the dynamics. Okay. Ah, I like to focus on this one. Alcohol can cause all this and cancer. Uh, but the most important cause of cancer, the most contribution is from smoking. Then weight gain, alcohol, UV light, exposure to sunlight, poor diet. The infection, physical inactivity. <coughs> so when you look at this, you realize that smoking must be stopped, alcohol and excessive weight and diet and all that, exposure to the sun, especially Singapore, is very important. And infection, infection is not so much physical activity is not so much the day uh, causes. So, now you understand why uh, there is a reduction in cancer diagnosis in Singapore and elsewhere. Because a lot of it is controlled by smoking and if you have health campaigns to reduce the smoking, all this reduces. The age, these are risk factors that uh, cannot be changed, eh? but all can be changed except for the last one. So, how to slow down cancer? Maintain a healthy weight, regular exercise, strength training. Okay, exercise causes the body to produce stem cells and you can re repair your body. But exercise training also produces benefits because it makes you stronger through the release of several hormones that make you young. It's and it's the same for men and women. Yeah. And especially postmenopausal female exercise is particularly important. Healthy yeah. diet, limit alcohol, protect yourself from the sun, use sunblock, protect yourself from infections, especially STDs, and get screening tests depending on. Uh, your family and your personal history. That is very important. So, obesity is defined by BMI in medical literature. BMI is weight divided by the height multiplied by twice. Obesity is your BMI is more than 30. Overweight if your BMI is more than 25. <laughs> so, you look at me, what do you think is my BMI? <laughs> So it is just top normal weight, you see? Just because I drink a little alcohol for, for pleasure. Uh, I drink alcohol as a means of uh, calming myself because I'm highly excitable. So instead of using tranquilizers, well, one drink is like one tranquilizer. But if, if you look around at Stalky Chang and elsewhere, there are a lot of men who have what I call an alcohol belly. Uh, three to six months pregnant, that kind of thing. And that is overweight. Once you're over six months pregnant, it is obese. And the other thing is, you find that some of these people, they're very healthy. Yeah. I think we know a friend here who is vegetarian, who is very healthy, but obese. Man, do you know what's the reason why they're obese? The amount of calories is high. And if the amount of calories is high, no matter how healthy your diet is, you can still be obese. So, he has stabilized at 13%. Eh? He has gone up and then gone down again. Uh, the previous estimate was about 10%, then it got up to 13%.
and overweight has increased. I think because of alcohol. Because you see people all... Bubble tea. Bubble tea. Yeah, yeah. Correct. And it's sugars. <laughs> Biggest contributor to the weight, carbohydrates, donuts, sugar drinks, chips, uh, fatty foods, red meats, excessive calories, even if the foods are healthy, excessive alcohol, fatty foods, fried foods. Fried food. Fried food, you end up more abdominal fat, which is toxic. Processed food, energy dense, highly digestible, but a lot of harm. Pizza is a processed food and it's considered mm -hmm. that. All the fried, all the fast food are uh, unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So exercise prescription. If you have never exercised, what do you do? I found this exercise prescription very, very good because it doesn't take your maximum heart rate. Maximum heart rate is 220 minus your age. As you get older, the maximum heart rate that you can go is fixed by that. Okay. So let's say your maximum heart rate is here. You want to measure this, and this is a heart rate result. How do you measure this? Active to the amount that you can endure, and heart rate is up. Stop. Rest one minute. Take the heart rate. This is how we measure. This is not the resting heart rate. This is one minute after stopping exercise. And this is your reserve. If you are unhealthy, this goes up, your reserve is less. So how do you exercise? You exercise until 40 to 50 percent of your reserve. So let's say your reserve is here because you're not healthy, so 50 percent is here. If you are healthy, your reserve is lower, 50 percent is here. So it's a very, very good way. It was this was conducted in a South American country. Uh, very elegantly put together. And uh, they were able to help a lot of people to improve their health and the use of services in decline. A lot of economic benefit of it. So notice that it's over a three month period. You want to exercise, start an exercise program to bring yourself up to scratch, it needs about 3 months. So for people who never exercise, this is what is recommended. For people who are exercising, maybe you should consult a physician, a, a, a person who specialize in healthy lifestyle like myself, or uh, exercise physiologist, to advise you on what kind of exercise you should do. But I thought this was one of the best things. I like this thing because it takes into account the level of your health calories. So before I used to take the maximum heart rate and go from that, which is a bit like agalogy. <laughs> I find this a bit more elegant. So that's why I show it. Because it looks at your heart rate result, which is this thing, and then help you to move it up. Okay, there are a lot of screening tests for cancer. Females will know that there's such thing called mammogram, right? And uh, we have heard of gastroscopy, colonoscopy, liver, we have this prosthetic cancer. We now have imaging and biomarkers. There is a biomarker called Carbohydrate antigen 19-9, CA 19-9, which can help you to identify prostate cancer. And of course, all this can be used, MRI, PET, terahertz scans is also being used. Genetic biomarkers, liquid biosystems, that means all, any secretion in your body can be used to screen for cancer, and that's what we should do. It's more and more cancers can be screened and you can detect them. In fact, as you grow older, they screen you more and more for cancer. I have myself scope. I have gone through a lot of tests just to make sure that I'm healthy. And to, nowadays, they're pushing this HPV, human papilloma virus. This is a virus uh, 
they give you cervical cancer and it's proportional to a sexual activity thanks to the contraceptive pill uh, people are more sexually active so this is rising so uh, for quite a while now gynecologists have been doing a, what they call a pap smear right take a smear of the cervix and you can diagnose early cervical cancer but there is even a better way What's a better way? Vaccination against HP virus. So, younger people, younger females, especially teenagers, before they become sexually active, vaccinate them. I'm not saying that they will be sexually promiscuous, but you can never tell. There is a case history written up years back of a nun who got cervical cancer. So people start to point fingers. She's from his goods. But when you investigate the case very thoroughly, you find that many years back when she was a teenager, she was raped. And that in itself caused the cancer. Why take that risk? I'm not saying anything about the kind of sexual activity. But I'm saying that any accidents can happen that give rise the cancer. So there is an answer available and there's vaccination. And at this day and age, not to vaccinate, not to be correct. Uh, no point trying to hide yourself under all kinds of moral statements that you want to make. Because I'm not saying anything about your morals, I'm just simply saying to protect you. Okay? So all this can be straight, lung, breast, liver, colorectal, HPV. I thought this was particularly important nowadays because uh, uh, social life has changed a lot. And females are more out in society and therefore have all the risks that go along with it. Terrors and cancer. Terrors have been used for the detection of cancer, that's a beautiful thing. Cancer is able to demetallate cancer cells and downregulate cancer and cause cancer cells to die without damaging it. And compared with x-ray or CT scan or other kind of scans, you can't do your x-ray scan too many times, right? But you can do your terror scans multiple times. <laughs> so, there is a lot of potential in terahertz scanning and this property, the ability to demetallate cancer cells can be used to relieve some effects now that and yes, terahertz also has anti-inflammatory, antioxidant and uh, cause cells to, to die if they are not healthy these are all very good when you come to saying cancer so terahertz has a place in cancer uh, therapy as well as diagnosis because of the terahertz scans. So there you are. Biological effects of cancer all the way down. Right? And biomedical application, imaging, detection of medicine, physiotherapy can be used for cancer, all kinds of cancers, the detection of biological samples, yeah. inhale and neck diseases, is the various cancers, thyroid nodules and all that, and parents can be focused in the pulse, yeah. and you can treat the cancer. So, terrorists has a great application, but unfortunately we are among our users, we are using it as lay people. And so you can't use it as a primary means because you still be under medical care. And this is only an adjunct, something that you do to supplement what the doctor is doing. Stem cells, as I mentioned just now, for blood cancers, you can do a stem marrow, bone marrow transplant. And for cancer cells, we can do an infusion of a white blood cell called NK cells. NK uh, stands for natural killer. So, using stem cells, targeted therapy, 
we have improved cancer survival by a lot. Traditionally, cancer survival using chemotherapy was only 30%. Now we have survival still rates as high as 25 to 75 percent. Now that is impressive. So living cancers with poor survival, uh, improved pancreatic liver, all these cancers. The cancer rate peaked in 1991, then fall to 33 percent, mostly due to prevention. So a lot can be done to prevent Okay. So there's such a thing called cancer stem cell. And in fact, cancer cancer cell can multiply and recur because of these cancer stem cells. So cancer stem cells can repair the cancer, can remove enzymes, evade the the uh, antibodies and you can transfer yourself to all over the body, you know. These two terms stand for different ways whereby they can get into different places. EMT stands for the uh, part way where they can squeeze in between cells. See? So you need normal stem cells that can overcome the cancer stem cells. The comparison between normal stem cells and cancer stem cells. And that, that is why it is very important to realize that when you're facing with something like cancer, which is so uh, re can be resistant and can grow uncontrollably, because all you need is one cancer stem cell surviving somewhere in your body, still there, it can grow. But if you have normal stem cell, you can overcome the effects. Mm -hmm. And also, right now, can are able to do. So, cancer is about lifestyle, about what you do with yourself. Uh, whether alcohol, smoking, diet, or, or, or even lifestyle, which is good with exercise. Uh, it's a, my just feel with all this pleasure or are you mindful on what is it that you want your intention what do you want to do what do you want to do what do you want to accomplish if you just want to enjoy life for the moment yes you can you can still have a chakotia once a month your body will recover you can have your rose pop ever so often but make sure your body will allow to recover but when you focus on outcome and if you are mindful, if you are focused, if you have this gratitude which brings in positive uh, attitudes and positive mindset because you have an attitude of gratitude, people who are religious thank uh, God or whatever for it. If you have that attitude, that itself will engender positive attitude. And that help you to be a better person. Otherwise, you find that negative attitudes will add on to the stress of all the things that we talk about. So, happy, healthy, fine, gratitude is about that. Maintain good habits, your action is about that. Fresh food, balanced diet, adequate exercise. Exercise is about lifestyle. Uh, I'm impressed by the fact that everywhere you go, if you really want to recover, there is no choice but to exercise. Whether it is anxiety, depression, whether it's obesity, whether it's alcohol, whether it's heart disease, almost anything, you must exercise. Exercise is basic. Your positive outlook, lower your stress, be connected with people and that's, that's it that's what life is about that's how you can prevent cancer go for the right screen test whatever your respect may be so sum up
thorough care is suitable for all these things, inflammation, pains, blockages, skin particularly. It's not suitable for pregnant, for acute disease, congenital disease. For this too, I beg to differ from official uh, private international policy. I would say that it is acceptable. On open wounds, you can blow. The trial to show is go faster with implants. You can. Because the, the metals chosen for implants are selected on the basis that they will be subjected to the kind of medical intervention that any human beings would be. But having said that, everybody is different. And I would suggest that there is no contraindication how you will try at your own risk. And more often than not, the risk justifies it. Okay? So, so much for cancer prevention. I hope I make my point that we saw the choices that we make. And then we have this scan which is able to uh, help people identify which portions of their body they are able to see what is not working well and then we take action from it. Often the results of this scan correlate with your personal risk profile as well as your family history and in a sense that's what it's all about so that's it for now yeah any questions